Hey what's going on guys, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how it is that you can get real time and historical stock data including key metrics, financial statements, dividend data, price data, all in your Google Sheet spreadsheet without the pain of having to waste time copy pasting this data yourself. That being said, let's get to it. Okay, so we're gonna start with one of the most simple things that you can do on Google Sheets, and that is to use the Google Finance function to get real-time data on your spreadsheet. So the way it works is very simple. All you have to do is enter Google Finance function, and this already comes by default on Google Sheets, so you don't have to install or do anything. After that, it will show you this prompt where it tells you exactly what the function needs. When it comes to real-time stock data, this is very simple. All you have to do is the company ticker, so for example, Apple, and then the attribute. If you don't enter an attribute, by default, it's going to give you the real-time price, uh, but we can also enter the attribute price. And as you can see, what this is going to give you is the real time price for Apple. If we were to go over the value at the time that I'm recording this video, you will see that it's actually accurate. Now, the cool thing about this function, like any other function, is that you can use cell referencing so that you can get a lot of data at once. So let's say I want to get the real time price data for this particular number of companies. All you need to do is instead of entering the ticker manually, you reference the cell that has a ticker and then the attribute. And then all you have to do is make sure that you lock in the cells properly. In this case, I'm going to use absolute referencing with uh, F4 on my keyboard to be able to do this. And what that's going to allow me to do is I can either drag this down like this or I can double click and it's gonna copy down the formula for each of the stocks. So that way you can get multiple stocks, real-time price data a lot more easy. Now where this can get tricky is how do you get data for companies that are not listed in the US? So the great thing is that Google has this page where they list all the stock exchanges that they cover through Google Finance, as well as the respective code. So for example, let's say that I'm looking to get a Canadian stock. So we see that we have the TSE and the TSX. All I have to do is enter that code, colon, and then the ticker. Another method which is better is to just Google the company name followed by the word stock. And this is gonna tell you straight from Google Finance what the ticker convention is. As you can see in this case is TSE colon T. So all I have to do is replace this Apple by TSE colon T and you will see how you can get the data you want for international stocks. Now before I show you how to get historical stock data on your spreadsheet, let me show you an alternative. It's called Y Sheets and the reason why I'm showing you this is because it might fit better your particular purpose. So we have a tutorial video on how to get started with Y Sheets but it's basically a Google Sheets add-on that you install after that, all you have to do is log in with your account, of course, and use the wise price function. And the way the function works is very similar to the Google Finance function, except instead of just being able to enter one ticker at the time, you can enter multiple tickers. After that, enter the parameter, which is the same thing as the attribute. So we're going to do price. Uh, the capitalization and the spacing do not matter. As you can see, you're gonna get the real-time price for all these companies, but the difference is that you can update this data as often as you like. So all you have to do is click on Refresh Data, and you will see how automatically the data will update to that particular minute slash second. Now that you know how to use the Google Finance function and the Wise Price function, it is important to know what attributes and parameters are available for the function. So as you can see, we've written this article and that's uh, this video is actually based on this article, but as you can see the attributes that are available in this case for the Google Finance function, along with a specific note about what this means. On the other side, for the wise price function, here is 
the data that's available that you can enter as a parameter. By combining both functions, in this case the Wise Price function, as well as the Google Finance function, you can do some truly unique ways of analyzing your company. So in this case, this is an example of a little stock tracker that you could build yourself that allows you to keep track of your stocks and how they're doing. All you have to do is use the functions like I show you based on the tutorial and then you can make any modifications you like. Now, if you don't want to build this template yourself, you can download it for free. The link is in the description. But this is the kind of cool stuff that you can do once you master both the ability to get stock data and the ability to use Google Sheets properly. Okay, so now you're looking for historical price data for a particular stock. In this case, this is Apple. You're looking to get what the close price for that company was for these dates. So what do you do? It's very simple. All you have to do is use the Google Finance function again. And as we talked about, you're going to enter the ticker. But now you're going to enter the attribute, which I'm going to discuss which attributes are available, followed by the start date and the end date. So in this case, this is going to be my start date, but I could change it to whatever I want. This is going to be my end date. You're going to close the bracket and you'll see that you're going to get the data that you're looking for. So it's going to spill uh, the date and the close. And depending on the date, it's going to show you what the close price was. Uh, the only thing you need to make sure of is that you are entering an actual date. So this is the format that um, Google Sheets follows. And you can, again, use the date format to make sure that you're going to get the right data for the right date. Now, in terms of the metrics or the attributes that are available for this, uh, for historical stock data, you have the open, close, high, low, volume, and all. If you change it to all, for example, it's going to return all of them combined. As you can see, it does indeed return all of the information at once. Uh, you might only see that it's formatted differently just because I changed the format to make it bigger for you guys to see But that's how you get historical stock price data using the Google Finance function There's one main problem when using the Google Finance function and the problem is that you cannot get historical stock financial on your spreadsheet which is a real shame because that's really what you need to be able to analyze companies and to be able to see if they're worthwhile investments. So this is really where White Sheets shines. You can combine White Sheets and Google Finance together to get all the data at once. So let me show you how that works. There's two ways in which you can get uh, historical financials and key metrics using White Sheets. One of them is called Statement Dump. So here you enter the company name or ticker. So in this case, we're gonna do Apple. You can select annual or quarterly data and then standardize or as, as, as reported SEC financials. We recommend using standardized financials because that way you can compare the numbers across multiple companies, but this is up to you. And then all you have to do is click on get data. As you can see, what happens is that you get the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, key metrics, and growth metrics for this company for multiple, multiple years. So in this case, it goes back all the way to 2003. One cool little trick that I like to use is to enter a column to the left, use the sparkline function, just enter the data, close the bracket, and this is pretty cool so you can see a direction um, in which the numbers are going. So you can just drag it across and you will see is the revenue growing, is it shrinking, how about the operating expenses, all this information.
Now it's helpful to be able to access all of the financial data for a company at once, but what happens if you wanna build a specific model, a specific way of analyzing a company? This is where the WISE function is very helpful. So all you have to do after you have WISE sheets is enter equals WISE. You're gonna enter the symbol. Here you can enter an individual parameter like just revenue, or you can enter multiple parameters. So in this case, I'm gonna enter all of these parameters at once. And then you're gonna select the period. The period could be TTM, it could be LY, which is the latest fiscal year. It could be LQ, which is the latest quarter, and TTM, which is the trailing 12 months. If you do uh, an actual year like 2020, you could also select the quarter, like quarter one for that year. So in this case, I'm gonna do TTM. I'm gonna lock in this parameter so I could drag the function down. And as you can see, I'm gonna get all the data for Apple. All I have to do is drag it down. And then the same thing is gonna happen for the other companies. Now, the cool thing is if I then change the ticker to Walmart, you will see that it will update with the respective data. As to what data is available, you can see this, there's gonna be a link in the description, but you can see all the data that's available here. You can get anything from the income statement, anything from the key metrics, the balance sheet, the financial statement growth, and the cash flow statement. For the price data, this is only for the wise price function only. The thing to note is that the spelling is what matters. The spacing and the capitalization do not matter as long as the spelling is the same. So you can enter revenue and if the R is capitalized or if it's not capitalized, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna get the function output anyways. When it comes to accessing data from international exchanges, you can see on this page that there's gonna be a link in the description. You can see all the exchanges that are covered. There's 50 plus exchanges right now that are covered and we're constantly adding more. The thing that matters is the extension. So this is the extension that you use to access particular companies from that exchange. So for example, let's say that I'm trying to access that company Telus from the Toronto Stock Exchange. What I would do is enter the ticker followed by that TO. So let's try that here. Instead of Tesla, I'm gonna do Telus, so T.TO. And you will see how you get the data. There's one more important data point that you can access using Wise Sheets. First, we have the dividend yield, which you can access by using the Wise function. Again, you enter the ticker, the parameter dividend yield, and then you can do TTM to get the dividend yield at this particular moment. As you can see, this is the dividend yield. The other thing that's really useful is to get the historical dividend payments from a particular company. So in that case, you can use the wise price function where you enter the ticker and then dividend as a parameter. And as you can see, the function will populate the date, the dividend payment that was made, the adjusted dividend, the payment date, and the declaration date. This way you can more easily track dividend payments and also being able to forecast a little bit what you think the company is gonna do in terms of its dividends. Altogether using Y Sheets and the Google Finance function, you can build some really cool stuff like this model that I'm showing you right now. As you can see, it uses the Google Finance function in this case. Uh, it also uses Y Sheets to get all this data at once. And as you can see, it makes different calculations and it allows you to do um, different analysis for a particular company. The cool thing is that you can easily remove the sticker, change it to whatever company you like, and all the calculations are gonna be done for you. So that's really the magic and the beauty behind this. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and share it with somebody that's gonna benefit from all the insights that we just shared with you. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.